In today's video, we are going to be going over conservation of energy, and we're going to be doing this using one of the excellent simulations from PHET Interactive Simulations. This simulation is entitled Energy Skate Park Basics. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Step by Step Science. Please subscribe, click the notifications bell so you don't miss a thing. Give us a thumbs up, leave us a nice positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. And in addition to that, we have made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials which you can find at our Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below. And let's get started. We're going to be talking about conservation of mechanical energy, which is basically conservation of kinetic and uh, potential energy. And I'm going to go over a quick review of kinetic and potential energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion, we often say, it's the symbol, Ke. The unit for the kinetic energy is the joule. Here is the equation, Ke is one-half mv squared. m is the mass in kilograms, v is the velocity in meters per second. There's a v in here, but what we're often talking about, and the way I'll refer to it is, it's really the speed. And you can see from this equation that the most important part of the equation is the velocity or the speed. The faster you go, the more kinetic energy you have. The slower you're going, the less kinetic energy you're going to have. So really, the kinetic energy of an object depends on its velocity. Now for the potential energy, potential energy is energy stored. It's stored energy, and we're talking about gravitational potential energy, so we're going to say that it's the energy stored by an object because of its position relative to other objects. And really what we're going to be talking about is the energy relative to a certain position above the surface, whether it's the surface of the room or the surface outside, but it's the energy that an object has because it has some height above some surface. Now, the uh, unit again for energy is the joule. The equation symbol, the symbol for potential energy is PE. This is the equation that we use for calculating gravitational potential energy. The potential energy is equal to the mass of the object times G times H, which is the height. The mass is M measured in kilograms. Acceleration due to gravity at the Earth's surface is 9.81 meters per second squared. And the change in the height, the height above the surface, is H, and that is going to be measured in meters. Now, we're also going to be talking about the total mechanical energy, which is simply adding together the kinetic and the potential. That's all you got to do for the total. Again, the symbol is the, uh, the unit is the joule, and I'm going to use the symbol TME for total mechanical energy. Sometimes you just see an E, or sometimes you see ME for mechanical energy. Now, also in this case, we need to talk about conservation of energy because we're going to be talking about conservation of energy and how energy can be conserved in a system. And conservation of energy is the fact that the total energy of an isolated system remains constant. And often we just say that that means that the energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be transformed from one form to another. Now, in this uh, simulation in the video, we're going to start out by saying there's no friction for the skater, and therefore energy is conserved. So the total mechanical energy of the skater at any one point on the skating track is going to be equal to the total mechanical energy at any other point on the track. And that means if we add the kinetic and the potential at one location, it will be equal to the sum of the kinetic and the potential at another location. Okay, so here is the simulation that we're going to use. This is an excellent simulation. Again, it has called Energy Skate Part Basics. There's three different windows. There's the intro window, the friction window, and the playground window. We're going to use the friction window. There's three different tracks, this kind of U-shaped track, then there's this ramp-like track, and then there's this one that looks like a W. We're going to use this one, and we are going to keep the mass where it is. We're going to reduce the friction to zero. We'll start off with the friction at zero, then we'll talk about what happens when we add friction. We're going to have the bar graph, the grid, and the speed. I think the pie chart is a little excessive. It get gets a little distracting. And you can see that the skater here and this in very important graph, this is the graph, I think, the key to the whole thing because we can see the relationship with this graph of the kinetic, the potential, the thermal, and the total amount of energy. The thermal energy is really the heat. So... When we have the skater just standing right here, the skater has no height, the skater is not moving, and therefore no kinetic and no potential energy, and the total energy of the skater is zero. 
But you can see as I begin to raise the skater up above the zero meter, above the ground surface, I'm giving the skater some potential energy because I'm giving the skater some height. Now at the very top, I can hold the skater there, not moving, no kinetic, and then it has all potential energy, and we reduce the friction to zero, so therefore there's no thermal energy, and the total energy you can see there also. And if I let the skater go, you can just see the skater goes back and forth, and you can see the relationship here between the kinetic and the potential and the total. The total remains constant because for any place on the skater's track, if I add up the kinetic and the potential, I will get the total, and the total remains the same because energy is being conserved because there's no friction. Now, the nice thing about these simulations is you can slow this down, so you can kind of see better where is the potential its highest, where is the potential its lowest, where is the kinetic energy its highest, and where is the kinetic energy its lowest. You can see that very nicely, the relationship between the kinetic and the potential, as the skater skates back and forth. Now, I'm going to let the skater go one more time, and then I'm going to stop the skater almost at the highest, which would be six meters, and I can step through, and I can see as I skater comes to the top, it's slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, and right there, basically, the skater's velocity is zero. That means that the skater has no energy, no, excuse me, no kinetic energy, but all the energy that the skater has is stored as potential energy, and you can see that's equal to the total. So at this location, the kinetic is zero, the potential is its highest, and that's equal to the total energy. Now I'm going to let the skater come down the track. And as the skater comes down the track, you can see the kinetic is increasing and the potential is decreasing, and right about here, they're equal to each other. Well, the, Where did the kinetic energy come from? At the top, there was no kinetic energy. Well, that kinetic energy came from the potential because as the skater comes down the hill, it loses potential energy because the height is decreasing. As it comes down the hill, the skater is gaining kinetic energy because its velocity is increasing. And so we're converting potential to kinetic energy. And then we come down a little farther and right down there at the bottom you will notice the skater has no potential because the skater has no height. You will notice the skater has lots of kinetic. In fact, all of the potential energy has been converted to kinetic, and the kinetic energy is now equal to the total because this is the point at the bottom where the skater is going the fastest, and all of its energy is kinetic energy. Then as we go back up the hill again, you can see the potential is now increasing because it's gaining height, the kinetic is decreasing because it's losing speed. And then once again, when we get to the very top, you can see that the skater stops momentarily, always stops momentarily before coming back. Now we're back to the same situation we had over here, all potential and no kinetic. So I can put this back and let it just run, and you can see once again the relationship between the kinetic and the potential stays the same, the total never changes because we have conservation of energy. No thermal energy because there's no friction. Now, I can increase the friction, which is the real situation because it's never gonna, not going to keep going back and forth forever. But now you can see I'm introducing some friction. That friction is causing some of the mechanical energy to be lost as heat. But still, if I add up kinetic, potential, and thermal, I'll still get the same total. You can see the total never changes. All right? But friction is causing some of the mechanical energy to be lost as heat. And if I let the skater go back and forth, now you will see the skater comes to a stop at the bottom, and all the potential and all the kinetic energy has been converted into thermal energy right like that. But you'll notice the total is the same. All right, so now let's go back and summarize what we saw here, right here. And we can come back here, and here's the skater at the top. At the top, we said the skater had the highest potential energy and no kinetic energy, no velocity, no kinetic energy, greatest height, 
highest potential energy. Then at the bottom, the scalar comes down the bottom, the potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. Why does that happen? Because the height is decreasing and the speed is increasing. At the bottom, there's no potential. Why? Because there's no height. And all of the energy has been converted to kinetic. So whatever potential it had here, now all that is kinetic. And we'll show you how to do that calculation in just a moment. Back up the other side, kinetic is converted into potential because the speed is decreasing and the height is increasing. And at the other side, at the top, we have the same situation, all potential and no kinetic. And as the skater just skates back and forth, that converts back and forth from kinetic to potential energy. Now, we can do a little calculation and show you how we calculate that. The kinetic and the potential energy at those four points, one, two, three, and four, now, we know the mass, we know the height, so therefore we can calculate the potential. The potential is just the mass times G times H. The mass is 56, G is 9.81 meters per second squared. That's a constant at the Earth's surface, and you can see the height is basically 6 meters. And we get that the skater has 3,300 joules of potential energy. I rounded that up a little bit, so it's 3,300. Now, at the top, we said earlier, there's no velocity. The skater's not moving, no speed. So what's the kinetic energy at the top? Zero. Now, for number two, what happens? As a skater comes down, it's going to be losing all of its potential. So at the bottom, it has no height and therefore no potential. Where did it all go? All that potential energy went into kinetic energy. That's 3,300 joules of kinetic energy now. At point three, as it goes back up the other side, now we're converted all the kinetic back into potential. And then at the very last thing is right here, we're going to say four is right here at the, at the middle, basically. So we could calculate the potential energy and then subtract that from the total to get the kinetic. But we know if it's right there in the middle, then it's halfway down or halfway up, and it's half of the energy is potential, and the other half is kinetic. But in all four cases, if we add up the two types of energy, kinetic and potential, they always equal 3,300. That is conservation of energy if we say here there's no friction. Now, another common thing you'll be asked to do is to figure out what is the velocity at point two. Or really, you could figure out the velocity at any point along here. We know the velocity at the top is zero, but we want to know the velocity at the bottom and how fast the skater is going. And we can do that in two ways. The first way we can use is just the kinetic energy equation because we know the kinetic energy is 3,300 joules. So I can rearrange this equation for the kinetic energy and rearrange it for the velocity. And then I get that velocity is the square root of 2 times Ke divided by m. Well, we know the kinetic energy is 3,300. So it's 2 times 3,300 divided by 56. And you get 10.9 meters per second. Another way we can do that is using what we would say conservation of energy equation. Here's a conservation of energy. The total mechanical energy at one point is equal to the total mechanical energy at another point. Well, at point one, we know the object is not moving, so it has no kinetic energy. At point two, we know that the lowest has no height, so that's going to mean that the kinetic potential energy is zero. So each of these terms is zero. So now we have the potential energy at one is equal to the kinetic at two, which we knew that already. The potential energy is mgh. The kinetic is 1 half mv squared. You can see we have an m on both sides of this equation. We can cancel those two m's and solve for v. And for this equation, we get that the velocity is the square root of 2 times g times h. And it's the height. It's really the change in the height. And that's 6 meters. Plug the values in again. And we get 2 times 9.81 times 6. And we get the same value of 10.9 meters per second. So there's two different ways you can come up with that answer. One is just using the kinetic energy equation, and one, you would say, in this case, using conservation of energy. Okay? So there you go. I think we did a very good summary of conservation of energy using one of the excellent simulations from PHET Interactive Simulations. That's the Energy Skate Park simulation. I'll put the link to the simulation in the description below. And I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following five things. Support our channel, Step-by-Step -step Science. 
You should subscribe, please. You should click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. You should leave us a nice positive comment. Give us a thumbs up and don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate it very much. We'll see you in the next video.